here. Come say hi. Come say hi. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video here on my personal YouTube channel, uh, Nicole Off Grid. Today's video, oh now he wants to come over here. You wanna come say hi? <laughs> you may say hi, Jensing. Oi. <laughs> anyway, so today's video is gonna be a Q&A. I have a ton of questions to get through. If I don't answer your questions that you guys ask me on Instagram or here on YouTube uh, through comments, I'll probably do many more Q and A's um, down the road or in the future. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to get to everyone's question. So let's just dive right into it. So when I posted that I'm gonna do a Q and A on my Instagram, I was boating into town and I got so many questions asking if I boat to town alone. I got a ton. So yes, I do boat to town. I do boat to town uh, sometimes alone, not often, but if I need something and Jake's super busy here and I really need to run to town to get something, then I, I go. You know, I'm, I have that freedom, I have my boating license and it's not too challenging. I make sure that I go when it's not raining or I know that the waves aren't too crazy. Even if I want to go and explore on my own or go check out other islands around the area, I just hop in the boat and go. I do love going to town by myself because I could pop in my headphones and it's just like total freedom. There's nobody around. I have the AirPods that um, have the noise canceling. So I cancel out all the noise and all I hear is the music. And I don't know, it just like, in the music engulfs you but then you're like surrounded by this beauty by the ocean and the mountains and the sky and everything and sometimes if I pick just the right song like Enya or like a Braveheart soundtrack or something it almost makes me cry because it's just so beautiful and I'm in such a beautiful area so it just makes me really appreciate where I am um, and it's just nice to have that alone time to to spread my wings <laughs> and kind of fly while I'm boating um, it's really nice so yes I do boat to town next question I'm not gonna go in any particular order. I'm just gonna, as I've kind of written them down, I'm gonna go over them. So somebody asked um, if Jake and I already got married and if they missed it. <laughs> no, Jake and I haven't gotten got married yet. We're still engaged. We plan, we don't really, we don't have a set date for the wedding. Uh, obviously we're focused on having a baby and the birth plan and some other projects that we have going on. So I'm hoping maybe the end of next summer we'll do, we'll do that. Uh, I, I don't want to get married while being pregnant. I wanna be able to celebrate with my family and have a glass of champagne and not worry. I wanna look good in my wedding dress, you know? I don't wanna have a big belly and be all pregnant and look back on those pictures. So we're gonna wait and have the baby and, uh, and then have a, have a wedding. And then our baby can be a part of the day, a part of the ceremony, which I think um, is gonna be really special. It's gonna be really beautiful. I really look forward to that. But don't worry, you won't miss it because we probably will f film the big day. <laughs> put it on YouTube and take pictures and, and all that fun stuff. So another question I got is my favorite pregnancy podcast that I've been listening to. I switch between two podcasts that I find that I really like. Uh, the number one podcast that I really like a lot and I've been listening to pretty much every day, especially during my walks, is the Natural Birth Podcast. Um, I really like it a lot. Um, it's a lot of birth stories, home births, or just a natural holistic birth. That's what I'm going to do is a home birth. And then the other one is the Free Birth Society. I really like that one as well. So I'll kind of switch back and forth of whatever I'm feeling. I love listening to podcasts, especially when I'm doing projects or going on a walk or something. I like to pop in my headphones and and uh, dive into a podcast, so. I'm excited to hear your birth story. How you decided to do that? How you decided to, if you wanted to have a natural birth? Yes, um, you know, to be honest, that was one of the big reasons that I was so excited to share was because um, hearing other women's stories. I got a couple of questions about pregnancy cravings, if I've had them yet. I haven't had any crazy cravings uh, for a while I was craving ice water or just like a really cold cold beverage um, we don't have ice here 
Uh, we don't have a freezer, we just have a refrigerator. So I can get like my cold drinks, but if we like go on vacation somewhere or stay at a hotel uh, that has like a freezer or something, then I can like <laughs> quickly get my fix. But it's nothing crazy to where like, oh, I have to have ice water. Um, but I did notice it was something that I was thinking about often. But I will be honest with you guys. So I haven't been craving any like food or beverages, but I have been feeling very sexual and craving that. So that's one thing I've noticed is a little bit more heightened than normal, which I've always kind of been a, more of a sexual person. So it's like even more heightened, which is crazy. I've gotten a couple of questions about how things are going and also our birth plan. We're not ready to share our birth plan yet because we have a couple of things in the works that we have to announce first uh, for everything to kind of make sense of what we're doing. <laughs> it's kind of confusing, but you guys will know very soon of what our plan is. But I can tell you it is gonna be a natural home birth. It's not gonna be here at the yurt for multiple reasons. It is very remote here and we do wanna be somewhat close to a hospital just in case. And I do want my family to be a part of it. And uh, you know, it is very remote here. So it won't be here. Um, it's gonna be at a home somewhere else with an amazing midwife that we found Found. I'm just really excited. My pregnancy so far has been very magical, been feeling different things and just really stepping into this pregnancy. I just, I have loved every minute so far and uh, Jake and I have just been able to connect differently. I don't know how to explain it. And I know this is just the beginning, but it's just like this new thing that we have, you know, expecting a baby and talking about the future and seeing my my body change and um it's just it's just been so it's been so amazing the baby is growing and moving a lot we have felt the baby kicking and moving around in my tummy which is probably my favorite feeling in the whole world i don't necessarily feel a lot of movement throughout the day but when i lay down and rest and stay still is when baby really starts to move and oh, I just love it so much. <laughs> it's seriously the best feeling ever and um, I seriously look forward to, to that feeling every day. And sometimes I'll just lay down just to be like, oh, can I feel the baby moving? <laughs> and Jake's felt it too and sometimes he'll tell me the next day like, oh, I felt the baby move, you were asleep, but my hand was resting on your belly and I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, we'll answer some living off the grid questions. How and when did you know you wanted to live off the grid? Honestly, I never really thought about living off the grid. I've never heard that term before until Jake and I started YouTube and came out here. Uh, I knew I always wanted to live in the mountains or just somewhere in the forest. I never thought it'd be this hardcore. Uh, this remote um, in another country. <laughs> I never thought it was going to be this raw. Um, I grew up in a pretty small town and my grandparents lived up in the mountains so we'd always go take trips to go see the grandparents. It was like maybe like an hour, an hour away, 45 minutes. Um, and I just loved being up there. They had horses and they had, you know, a bunch of acre and it was just so much fun being up there and I just loved being up there and campfires and, and they had a wood stove. So I just always knew that I wanted to end up in the mountains. But I did live in the city for a while. I kind of got my city fix and then I met Jake and then we moved here. So I don't know there if there was like a specific time of like, oh, I want to live off the grid or live off in the mountains. I just kind of always knew I wanted to do that. So what's my favorite part about living off the grid? Ooh, this is a really tough question because there's so much I love about living out here. I don't know if you guys can hear that bird, but that pretty much answers my question. I think that my favorite part about being out here is the quiet. You never hear any cars, you never hear any ambulances, you never hear any police cars going by, you don't hear loud machinery, like you hear everything, you hear the rain, you hear the buzzing of mosquitoes, you, you hear the birds crowing in the background, uh, especially during the spring when everything starts to come alive. Like you just, you hear everything and I love it.
I mean, it really makes you in tune with nature and um, just makes you pay attention. It just makes you really take notice of everything that's going on. Someone did ask, what is my favorite season of the year? I used to say spring, um, spring and summer, but now living up here, I don't think I can choose. I think I love them all. They're all so unique and have such a huge part in mother nature and how the earth works and spring is so important because that's when things come alive and it's so beautiful and you know the winter is over and things are just coming back and it's it's a new it's a new beginning and summer is the gardening and storing up for the winter and and starting all that and then fall is where everything dies and goes back to the earth all of it is just so beautiful in its own way so i don't think i have a specific favorite anymore. I like them all. Living up here just really makes you take in each season like hardcore. Now we're stocking up firewood like we're really trying to put away firewood and preparing for the winter making wispy bundles and canning and jarring. Um, so you're just you're really immersed into fall and like what fall really stands for is to prepare for the winter. But now it's starting to rain I'm hoping it stops because the camera's out in the rain, but anyway. Come on, rain. Okay, I think it's lightening up. Okay, so another off-grid question, and then I'll move on to the next series of questions. What weird experiences have you had living off the grid? <laughs> Quite a few. I don't know if I can um, list them all, but some experiences that really pop out is Again, it's so quiet here, you hear everything. So sometimes we'll just randomly hear trees falling in the distance and it's like, there's no wind, there's no rain, nothing. We're just sitting there and all of a sudden you hear like a massive tree just fall. And you're like, what was that? <laughs> and that actually happens quite often. That is a crazy experience to just be sitting there and you hear something and you're just like, oh my God, what was that? At night, is when you hear a lot of crazy sounds and animal sounds that you aren't familiar with hearing and you try to like try to figure out like oh what is that um it sounds like like a deer or you're like no that doesn't sound like a deer uh, so then it gets like kind of spooky of like what is this animal and sometimes it gets really close and you're like oh my god and it's making this like crazy sound we've had some experiences with neighbors um actually a good amount of neighbors talking about or the locals around here uh, talking about Sasquatch. There are some hardcore believers <laughs> out here which I love. I love hearing their stories and they look totally normal like you wouldn't even I mean and you just you believe every word they're saying like I don't know how to explain it but anyway their their stories of seeing Sasquatch out here is 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 very detailed. I love hearing stories like that. I love hearing stories from the past. It's also really spooky when the dogs just randomly start barking. Like we don't hear anything and we're just like hanging out either working on a project or in the yurt or something and the dogs are outside and all of a sudden they start just like booking it for the forest and you're like oh my gosh what did they see and then all of a sudden they start barking like crazy. <laughs> it's like we didn't hear anything. So obviously they did. Um, so that's always really crazy um, to hear that. Someone asked, what is the age gap between you and Jake and how did we meet? So Jake and I are 10 years apart and we've been together for a little over four years now. We met in Arizona. We actually have a video in more detail about how we met um, on the Jake and Nicole show. It's probably like, it was one of our traveling videos. I think we were in Spain and we decided to read our text exchange from when we first met. I don't think we actually, we, there was like a part one and we were gonna do a part two and I don't think we did it. Um, but I'll just do a quick rundown. Jake and I met in Arizona. I was working at um, a preschool, a natural preschool that had a gardening program and I was gonna head up the gardening program. And if you guys know Jake or have followed Jake, he's been doing YouTube for like 12 years, 12 and plus years. He has multiple YouTube channels. So he had a YouTube channel about gardening in Arizona that was actually pretty successful or still is really successful. And a boss of mine 
asked me if I've ever heard of this Jake Mace guy and I was like, no. I was like, I don't watch YouTube. <laughs> Never on the internet. Too busy. I was going to school also at the time. So school and work. And what he did was he opened up his garden. He had this beautiful amazing edible food forest in Arizona and during the weekends or like once a month he would open up his backyard and do a garden tour and answer questions about gardening tips and tricks and stuff like that and she wanted to buy me a ticket to go to his gardening event so I said sure yeah so I'll, you know I'll go so I went and we didn't officially meet at the gardening event because there was like a hundred plus people there there were so many people he always says like yeah I, I noticed you and I was like whatever there were so many people there and so anyway so what I ended up doing I took a picture of something in his garden he had this really beautiful bridge with a statue and I posted it to Instagram and I tagged him and so then yeah so then we ended up talking um for about three to four months and then he eventually asked me out on a date then we went out to eat and the rest is history <laughs> and uh pretty much have been inseparable since then. <laughs> so we traveled the world together and started this whole off-grid adventure and then now we're engaged and about to start a family. So, so much has happened in four years. <laughs> so much amazing stuff. Um, I seriously couldn't have asked for a better partner. Jake is a really special guy and I'm just really happy to be doing this life with him. Anyway, so that's how we met. Um, okay, so we're gonna kind of just go back and forth here. I, like I said, I don't really have this in any specific order. Someone asked, will we video the birth? Of course we're gonna video the birth, but I don't know if we're gonna share it on YouTube. We, you know, we're gonna video it for um, our family, for looking back on it years to come. Um, we're not too sure about how much we're gonna show. We'll only know how much we'll show, you know, weeks after the birth and how much we want to show and share, but we will film it. And um, I really want to have a birth photographer there. You know, we'll only share what we want to share. So I'm not sure how detailed we're going to share about it, but we will film it, um, but not sure how much we're going to share here on YouTube. And then um, someone asked about baby names. Jake and I have kind of a list of boy names and girl names that we kind of like, or if we hear, we'll put to the list. And then if we, say that name quite a bit or you know we'll kind of feel it out and if we don't like it we'll get rid of it if we like it we'll keep it on the list so we have toyed with some names we don't really have like oh my gosh this is the name uh, we don't really have like a name picked out yet if it's a boy or a girl and then also waiting to see if it comes to me in a dream or you know we might even just wait until the baby's born and kind of see if there's you know what name comes to us during the birth and and holding the baby and um after and stuff like that so we're just going to kind of be patient with the name and kind of see what what presents itself are we going to use cloth diapers yes we're going to use cloth diapers i've found a couple of companies that i really like a lot so i'm going to just do more research a good friend of mine is using cloth diapers i'm sure she'll give me some tips and tricks on which one she likes and what works well for her and uh, whatnot so yes we're going to use cloth diapers and we're also going to use compostable baby wipes for those of you who've been following our journey jake and i are really into natural materials. Um, even our clothing line is all natural, 100% cotton or hemp or linen. With all the baby stuff, you know, we are staying away from plastic. Uh, we're staying away from chemicals. We're staying away from, you know, the fake synthetic clothing. We want everything to be 100% natural materials. Cause like, we're gonna be putting this on our baby and we want it to be 100% natural and breathable and good for their skin. Like we don't wanna put plastic and polyester on a newborn skin. Like it's just so fresh and pure. And you know, we want the baby's skin to be able to breathe. Same with hats. Okay, I've been talking already way too long. <laughs> let's see, let's do one more question. What current books am I reading right now? I've already showed this in um, the last vlog. Spiritual Midwifery by Ina May or Ina May. Love this book. I've already talked about it a ton of times. You can see I've read it multiple times. Um, they're just amazing birth stories and um, advice about giving birth and it just kind of really dives into a female bo the female body and what to expect when giving birth and just and then postpartum, um, how your body changes and whatnot. So 
Um, love this book, highly recommend this book. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, it's actually starting to rain again and it's getting pretty dark. So I'm gonna head inside and cozy up next to the fire. Um, but I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, leave an awesome comment. I love reading the comments for any advice or just some positivity. Um, I love reading them. Uh, they're my favorite. So I will see you guys next time. The next video is going to be pretty awesome. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's going to be how I'm making my own baby clothes and how I'm dyeing them and the whole steps about dyeing my own onesies and making the baby blanket and all that stuff. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.